Well, aloha and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today on this very special live stream and podcast. Today is the 18th of October, 2023. My name is Paul Fletcher, and this is The Healing Source. This is week nine of the 10 weeks dedicated to the 10 da. For those of you that are just stumbling across this live stream, this podcast for the first time, these 10 da qualities are ways of bringing ourselves to every thought, word, and action in our life. Today's quality that I'll be focusing on is called Da Fu Wu, which is the greatest service. This quality, this quality, however, is the end result of the application of the previous eight qualities. So I need to take a moment to enlighten you on those, especially for those that are paying attention and following this series. The first of those qualities is Da I, the greatest love. The second is Da Quan Chu, the greatest forgiveness. And these words, if you're not familiar with them, Da I, Da Quan Chu, these are Mandarin Chinese because these 10 qualities were delivered to humanity through the uh, very well-renowned spiritual channel, healer uh, and doctor, Master in Jigang Sha. The, and he is Mandarin Chinese, so this is his native language, and this is how he originally received this information. The third of these qualities is Da Tsube, the greatest compassion. The fourth is Da Guang, meaning the greatest light. The fifth is Da Chen Bei, the greatest humility. The sixth of these ten qualities is Da He Xie, the greatest harmony. The seventh of these ten qualities is Da Cheng Sheng, which is the greatest flourishing. And last week was the eighth of these ten qualities, Da Gan Un, which is the greatest gratitude. And so each week I spent time uh, sharing with you the insights, the wisdom, and more that has been shared with me through my teacher. And I also, before each class, each session, I connect with my spiritual channels to receive any additional insights or information or the highest and best way to present this wisdom. I did the same thing today, and I will be sharing with you about Da Fu Wu, the greatest service. Now, the 10th Da, which I will cover next week, is the capstone on this. Think of these as the pyramid. You set the foundation with the greatest love. Love allows us to melt all blockages. And then we add to that the greatest forgiveness. When we forgive others, it opens our heart and allows us to grow and to move higher up the pyramid so that we can sustain the highest frequency, which is the point or the pinnacle, uh, the tenth of the Da, which is enlightenment. We cannot reach enlightenment, the highest of these ten Da qualities, unless and until we... Um, manifest in our life these other qualities in such a way that they literally are infused within our very thoughts, words, and actions. The third quality, which is much easier to accomplish when we have opened our heart with love and released blockages uh, related to forgiveness, is compassion. Compassion for ourselves, compassion for others. Far easier to accomplish that when we uh, act in unconditional love and unconditionally forgive others and ourselves, then compassion can become much easier. And as we move up this pyramid, we have the fourth quality of light. This is a natural side effect of being compassionate with love and forgiving. Our light is enhanced. People see our light. People come to us, and they they, they really wish to uh, express their pain and their suffering, and our light assists them. But because most of us do not have a solid foundation yet, we can become drained from people wanting that light. So we need to continue this quality of increasing in our thoughts, our words, and our actions, all of these 10 dot qualities. We need to become humble, realizing that just because we uh, 
carry more of an air of unconditional love and we're able to forgive now and be more compassionate and we now carry more light we must be very conscientious that uh, humility must be engaged at that point in time because without humility we can have pride we can have gains in our physical emotional spiritual life by employing more love forgiveness compassion and light all of a sudden parts of our life can turn around and we can become full of ourselves which is why humility is so important because when we are humble we never take credit humility is about recognizing that the source is the wellspring the water that feeds all of us comes from the source the life that brought us into creation and nourishes all of us comes from that same source and that is da chen bei the greatest humility it's not so much about uh, patting down the ego it's more about acknowledging the wellspring of life and where that wellspring came from the source creator giving credit merit and value to the source that can also include the other beings of love and light for those that grew up in some of the traditional teachings of the west it could be krishna it could be buddha it could be muhammad uh, some people grow up in the excuse me that was the east and the west they grew up jesus and mother mary and so forth it's it's okay to bring those beings of love and light into this stage of humility placing their light above ours because this causes us to be in a position that allows our heart center to grow more and more light to come in <clears throat> it's when we lack humility where we fall and as we're building this pyramid building that very strong base of love and forgiveness compassion and light adding to it the quality of humility we then can find ourselves in a very harmonious place, Da Hoshe, the greatest harmony. We can then see where these five qualities have brought far greater harmony to our communications. We now communicate with greater love and light. We forgive people like the boss and co-workers and people that gossip. We recognize that we may have made some of those same mistakes. We are able to be more compassionate to all those around us thereby creating more harmony not separation and segregation which is very predominant in today's society the this is an agenda of all things that are not of the light the more separation and segregation that can be caused by color race beliefs it doesn't matter <clears throat> doesn't matter doesn't matter so pay attention to yourself do you get fired up with a certain news thing about this political candidate or this belief about racism or that belief about color that belief about sexual orientation blah 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 trust me when i say that is all purposeful uh and uh, the the purpose of that is not by people of the light the purpose of that is specifically to cause separation disharmony so if you wish to have harmony in your vibration then you need to have love for all of those various things that the, that 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 is not of the light is trying to create separation with you need to have forgiveness for all of those even those that espouse such hatred such discord about sexual orientation religion belief color blah 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 Okay, we need to have great love and forgiveness because they know not what they say and do. They do not realize they are caught up in the manipulation. We need to have compassion that they are caught up in that. Give them more love, give them more light, give them more forgiveness and be the example so that they can follow. Because ultimately we are leading to number nine, service. And that is not possible if we are not representatives of these 10 qualities the ability to be of service is not so much going out of your way to do physical things for others it is emulating these qualities in our very thoughts in our words and in our actions when we actually are unconditional love when we actually represent and truly live in a space of unconditional forgiveness when we share compassion for others that are going through suffering because they don't have enough love and they don't have enough forgiveness and they hold on to their beliefs and they hold on to their mindsets their attitudes and they pound their fist on the table and they tell you you're wrong 
Do we have enough love in our heart? Do we have enough forgiveness and compassion and light to smile and with the greatest humility be present to that without taking any of it personally so that we can be a representative example of the harmony, the sixth layer in that pyramid? As we become more harmonious in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions, there is a natural side effect, and that is flourishing. Our life becomes more abundant. Our relationships flourish. The communication in all our relationships uh, lack the disharmony. They lack the resistance. There is no longer those imbalances in your relationships that you might have had in the earlier aspects of your life. Your, your uh, problems around money and finances becomes easier. If you have trouble in those areas, then somewhere in that, that uh, podium of the pyramid we're building with these ten dollars, you are lacking. You may not have enough love for others or self. You may not have enough forgiveness for others or yourself. Compassion, light, and humility. Uh, humility is probably where the problem is because humility is about recognizing that you're not supposed to be doing it on your own. <laughs> We're so busy doing it on our own that we got caught up in the pain and the suffering. I have to do A, B, C. No, you have to allow the source to deliver. Source creates and the source nourishes. And humility allows us to remain in that beautiful space. So when we have these, flourishing can occur in every aspect of our life. Our health, our physical health will absolutely improve. <clears throat> Think about it. When you forgive others, you're no longer in a space of anger and resentment. When you forgive yourself, you're no longer putting yourself down, creating imbalances, disharmony within your physical body. And as you give yourself love, give yourself forgiveness, become compassionate for your struggles in life. And as you align to the source with humility and allow the source light to feed and nourish you, the light comes in and all of a sudden your health starts flourishing. You feel and look better. People say, wow, what happened to you? Oh, I don't know. I'm just practicing the ten da qualities in my thoughts, words, and actions. And all of a sudden, the harmony shows up in the flourishing of your health, your life, your relationships, and so forth. So these are parts of the pyramid that you are building. And as you flourish, there is another natural side effect of gratitude. Oh, everything is wonderful. I'm so grateful, God. Thank you so much, Source. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Buddha. Thank you, Mother Mary. Thank you, Krishna. And all of a sudden, gratitude just rolls off your tongue. It should not be something that takes that long to occur. We covered this last week. You want to recognize that absolutely everything in our life is an opportunity to transform. Do you think the source has it out for you? <laughs> Do you think the source wants your highest and best? Okay. And so whenever we have a challenge that enters our life, it is the great love of your great source that's saying, my beloved child, here is this wonderful opportunity I'm giving you that you can apply love, forgiveness, compassion, light, humility, and harmony to this set of conditions. And you can forgive others and forgive yourself, love others and love yourself. You can let it go. And if you see this challenge I am bringing to you with the eyes of these qualities, that we have made available to you, laid at your feet. And if you can apply the tools and techniques that have been given to you through Master Shah, through other beings of love and light as well, right? They all provide the same information, just a different way of presenting it. And if you can transform that challenge using these qualities, then you will literally level up. So whenever you have a challenge, why not choose, doggone in, the greatest gratitude? Why not choose that? Because it gives you the opportunity to not deal with that ever again, or at the very least, peel back another layer of it so that that onion is less thick. Because our goal ultimately is to become enlightened. And what do you think the, the goal of the enlightened being is? What do you think it is? The enlightened being 
Their goal is to help others. I've had three enlightened masters and all three told me the same thing in a different way. They all said that when they reached that level of enlightenment, they were literally out there in the universe with the source and they all three said the same thing in a different way. They were given the choice to leave their body and to just go hang out in heaven, hang out with the other enlightened beings, golf, whatever they do up there in heaven, right? They were all given that choice, the three that I know down here. And they're all three still alive. They're all three still serving. But the other choice they were given was to help others who need to find the path to enlightenment. All of them were given that choice. And they all said, no, I'm going to stay. They passed their test. If they said, no, I'm good. I reached my goal. I'm gone. Do you think they would go beyond that? They're probably going to be forced to come back because they didn't pass the test. They chose selfishness over selflessness. So everything that we're doing on these ten da qualities is towards the greater end of uplifting all those beneath us. Because as we literally become a living representative of more and more love, forgiveness, compassion, light, humility, as we harmonize our lives, we can grow those qualities and be that representation for others. When I was meditating prior to coming live, and by meditating, I mean doing a flow, because I just sat and I said, okay, heaven, please give me what you want me to say. And then I just spoke what, the, what they wanted me to say. And I'm telling you that now. <clears throat> and one of the things they said towards the end of that conversation was the greatest service is being these qualities, not doing these qualities. Sorry, I to turn that off. Being your greatest service is literally showing others what compassion is, showing others what and how to be harmonious in the midst of chaos, showing others what humility is. When you are these qualities, that is actually the greatest service that you can offer somebody. We can teach our kids anything, but they don't always listen. In fact, they typically go the opposite direction. I got a three-year-old, and, and if I want her to do what I want her to do, I have to think before it comes out of my mouth, and say the opposite of what I wanted to do. And then she'll do what I want. Okay, That's how we all are in this life. <laughs> Even after three and four and five years old. Whereas if the child watches what we do. Then they emulate that. The good and the not so good. Right? When something that happens where I'm not so pleased with, with what, what happens. <clears throat> that's my go-to. <clears throat> my little three-year-old. Guess what she's doing right now. <clears throat> They emulate what they see far greater than what we say. So heaven was saying, when we actually be this pyramid of this ten da qualities, when we reach that pinnacle, that's the greatest service by applying these. How do we apply these? It goes a lot deeper than tracing the calligraphies and chanting ten da, ten da, sure da, sure da. Shurda means tenda for those of you that are not familiar with that terminology. And what we chant is what we become. That's applying, you know, the four power techniques, five power techniques. However, it's far deeper than tracing a calligraphy and chanting. Does that help? Yes. Does it help tremendously? Yes. It will assist you to be able to be more loving, compassionate, more forgiving in those moments when you need to. Because by tracing and by chanting, you will have less um, clutter in your vibrational field that might inhibit you from reacting and responding in the highest and best way. So continue to trace those calligraphies, continue to chant those mantras. It is absolutely serving you. The highest application of these ten dot qualities is what few of us are actually doing, which is monitoring our thoughts words, and actions against 
these qualities? Did I think that thought with love? Did I say those words with compassion? Or did it have ego in it? Was I harmonious in my solution? Was my self-thoughts infused with a lack of flourishing consciousness? Did I show gratitude for this problem that just occurred? Every thought, every word, every action needs to be challenged on a consistent basis by these eight qualities. And as we do that, we are serving our soul journey. Uplift one, uplift all. Heal one, heal all. When we apply these qualities to ourselves, it is not selfishness. It is becoming more and more light. And as we become more and more light, we are the representative examples for others to follow. They will follow you just like your three-year-old will, just like your child will. They will emulate those qualities. Do go out and serve others. Do physically help them. Do serve them in whatever way possible. But none of us have the possibility of reaching enlightenment until we literally represent those qualities at the highest level. And it starts by being conscious of when we are not doing that. Okay? So let us work with the Tao calligraphy of Da Fu Wu specifically so that we can become conscious of that. Okay? And then let's do it like that. So let's connect using the four power techniques. Repeat after me. Dear the soul of this Da Fu Wu source calligraphy, as I connect with you, as I trace you, as I chant your mantra, could you please bless me to become more conscientious in my thoughts, words, and actions of when I am not being love, forgiveness, compassion, light, humility, harmony, flourishing, and filled with gratitude so that I can be a better service to myself and humanity. Thank you. And again, for those that are listening on podcasts that do not have the ability to see this calligraphy, I will be tracing for you. So let us trace this calligraphy and we will chant Da Fu Wu. Da Fu. When you trace by touching all five fingers together and following the lines. Very simple. Da Fu. 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 Greatest forgiveness, greatest love and light, greatest compassion, greatest humility, greatest flourishing, greatest gratitude, da fu, greatest service. Da Fu, greatest service. Da Fu, greatest service. Da Fu, greatest service. Da Fu. Greatest service. Dear the soul of this Da Fu, greatest service, source calligraphy. All the beings of love and light serving through this portal. I'm so exceedingly grateful for you to bless me each and every day 
each and every moment to be more and more conscious of questioning every thought, every word, and every action, challenging them. Did I apply these 10 qualities to my thoughts, words, and actions? Thank you for helping me release any negative vibrations on my field, on my soul, that might inhibit me from consistently and consciously questioning my thoughts, words, and actions so that I can become a pure representative of these qualities. This will allow me to be of great service to humanity, for the greatest service is oneness consciousness. And oneness consciousness is met by applying these 10 qualities in our thoughts, words, and actions. It is the natural side effect. How can we become one without love and forgiveness? How can we become one without compassion and light? How can we become one when we are stuck on me, 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 no humility? How can we become one with a lack of harmony or flourishing? How can we become one without gratitude for all that we have received? So we thank you, our source creator, for blessing us to release any negative vibrations in our field so that we can apply these 10 da qualities in our thoughts, words, and actions, so that we can become one, being the greatest service to each other by being the highest representation of these qualities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So complete tracing the source calligraphy. Unfortunately, these few minutes that I've applied are only going to bring us a certain amount of light and healing. But with that, we can always come back and do more. Now, for those of you that would like to know more about how to acquire these calligraphies, you can go to drsha.com, drshaw.com, and you can find these and more there. For those of you that would like to have daily opportunity for your personal healing, I do offer personal consults and healing. I do have an ongoing membership program, which is remote and done throughout the world. I have clients and students all over the world, where in five days of the week, we do half hour practices working with organ system, chakras, and energy centers. And for every person that's in my membership, I offer healing for them every day for three, uh, three requests, two requests, or just one request, depending on the level of membership you have. Every day, it might be healing for your finances or a physical health issue or an emotional imbalance. So part of the membership that I hope you take advantage of is that. You also get a private consult with me every month as part of the membership, which literally the cost of my consultations is more than the cost of my membership. And you get the membership as a gift built into it. So I encourage you to learn more at my website, wellspringoflight.com. And... I invite everybody to share this podcast, subscribe if it's your first time, share it with your friends and family. I look forward to being back next week when we do the capstone on these 10 dot qualities, the greatest enlightenment. So until then, have an awesome day, everybody. Bye-bye.